Derek was, he wasn't an ancient philosopher, but he did know the, the works of the ancient philosophers. And the main ethical question that the ancient philosophers asked, and I'm thinking, I suppose, particularly of Socrates, Plato and Aristotle, but also the philosophers who came after them, the main ethical question they asked was, how should I live? So that really, for them, was the practical ethical question. It seems to me it should be the same for us. How should I live? And their answer was, you should live in such a way that you have as good a life as possible. Where they meant, I think, a life that is as good for you as possible, a life that is happy, as happy as it can be. And that raises the question of what happiness or well-being is. And here again, De Derek made a, a seminal contribution in an appendix to Reasons and Persons, and any moral philosopher would be, be able to name this appendix. It was Appendix I, Derek on Wellbeing, in just a few pages, where he, he, he sort of changed the subject by being very clear that there were three kinds of theory about wellbeing. There's hedonism, the idea that what matters is pleasure and pain. There are theories that say uh, your, your wellbeing consists in the satisfaction of certain desires you have. And then, then there's what he calls an objective list theory, where you, you list a certain number of components, which might include pleasure, but would probably also include, say, knowledge or friendship um, or accomplishment. Objective goods, which don't depend on uh, their value um, uh, by being pleasurable or fulfilling any particular uh, desire. Uh, so Derek set these theories out, he came up with some very good objections to all of them and again looking for consensus he suggested that maybe the truth is some mixture or hybrid of these, um, of these different theories. I mean maybe the truth is that knowledge is good for you, knowing stuff about the world is good for you but only if you enjoy having that knowledge. If you get no pleasure from it at all then maybe it's not good for you. If you don't want to have it <laughs> Maybe it's not good for you, but if you have knowledge, you enjoy it, you want to have it, then perhaps it's good. Um, but he kind of put that view out there. He didn't really, um, he he didn't really push it as 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 the truth. It was a possibility. Derek uh, said uh, an odd thing to me, uh, not that many years ago. So we were talking about uh, Sidgwick, who was a hedonist, and I find hedonism quite plausible. The idea that really what matters in your life is how much pleasure you get and how little pain you get. Um, and Derek said, well, I hope you're wrong. I hope hedonism isn't true, because if so, I would have wasted my life. And I found that an odd thing to say, because it seemed to me he enjoyed uh, doing, doing philosophy so much, but actually maybe he didn't. Maybe, he, maybe it is true. And he, or at least he believed it was true, that he could have had a life in which he did less philosophy and more photography and more listening to music, and he would have got more pleasure out of it. What mattered to him, I think, was acquiring understanding and knowledge, and that really motivated him. Uh, and I think he was, to some degree, leaving it to, to other people, other philosophers or just other people generally, uh, to take his ideas and do things with them. But I also think it's to his credit, that when the so-called effect of altruism uh, movement began to emerge over the last few years, Derek uh, did some things which were, for him were quite unusual. He would give talks to the general public, uh, encouraging them to um, change their lifestyles, to become vegetarian, to give much more to charity, and to make sure that the charities to which they contributed were, uh, were maximally... Uh, effective. And he was also uh, very concerned about the degradation of the environment. But I think he also just had a general abstract um, thought that it, would, that it would just be very bad if human history came to an end now because it could be very long and it could be very good and he thought it would be such a waste if we gave up on that opportunity because of our own short-sightedness.